So our Gardena Soleno is a 5,400 square feet model. And this is the sticker on it showing the model number, which looks like a 15202-41. And it's a Soleno Minimo. It shows again there that it's an 18 volt, runs at 25 watts. Okay, but um, it seems like a lot of the other Gardena um, mowers also use the same or similar, similar type battery. So you can kind of use this as a guide to um, install an aftermarket, much more inexpensive battery that comes in much quicker on Amazon Prime, but also will run for much longer between charges, meaning that it will get your lawn cut much quicker um, every time you start it up. Originally purchased from Amazon. Um, there weren't any reviews on Amazon, so I might have been one of the first buyers in the US um, on Amazon. And it's been working okay. Um, cuts the wires, the boundary wires, relatively often. Um, but other than that, um, recently the battery, uh, the lithium battery completely died, went b way below voltage. It's an 18 volt lithium battery, lithium ion. And I think what happened was um, it had cut one of the wires or something. And uh, so it stopped running for you know, a couple weeks. Um, I wasn't there to kind of fix it or recharge it. So I think the battery continued to dwindle with the Bluetooth staying on. Um, that probably would have been avoided if the software was um, designed to shut off the power at a certain voltage, but it just stayed on. The light was blinking um, probably until it died, and, and once we tried to recharge it, it would only power up in the docking station barely, and otherwise it would just kind of turn off. Uh, so normally it should be about 18 volts plus or minus, and uh, I measured it at 4 volts when I took the battery out. So I've already taken the battery out, so I kind of just place it in there temporarily just to show you where everything goes. So this is the battery cable you can disconnect pretty easily. Then there will be a screw right here. You can take that out using the um, supplied Torx, T20 Torx bit, which is kept right here underneath the top cover. So once you take that out, you can squeeze the two clips in here on the side. You can see that two clips on the side keeps it in these two holes. So once you have it out, um, you can pull the wire out from this little strain relief organizer thing. And once you pull it out from here, or you could just pull out the battery first. No, it's already out. Um, so this is the lithium ion battery inside this case. I couldn't open the case. I like this clipped in pretty well. Um, didn't want to damage it, so just left it as is. Um, this wire does come off as well, but I don't really see a need to remove it at the moment. So that battery is about maybe $250 to $400 from the stores I saw online, most of them in Europe. So I found this battery off of Amazon, and this is actually a high capacity battery. It's 3.4 amp hour, or 3400 milliamp hour, whereas this one is the original is only two amp hour. So you're getting almost double the runtime. And I've kind of confirmed that through one of the other Amazon reviews on this product. So um, you should be able to get longer cut times, maybe close to two hours between charges. And the plug is the same four wire plug, just a different color. So, so let's go ahead and plug in the cable real quick to see where it can reach. A little spark there, but hopefully it's fine. Um, so it looks like you can probably maybe duct tape it to the side and, and whatnot, or maybe even um, I see the light blinking down there, so it does have power. That's good. Pretty simple inside. Looks like they just uh, there's just these two stepper motors and uh, another one that's for the um, for the blade, and then you have the main board. And it looks like a little communications board that connects to USB for maybe firmware updates at the factory. Alright, so because of the short wire, uh, short cable, there probably isn't that many spots you can mount it. So maybe um, you can 3M tape it up here, but you're going to want something relatively strong and durable so it doesn't fall off later. Because, because this would actually be the top surface, and right now we're looking at the bottom of the mower. So after test fitting the new battery in a few spots, um, especially this initial spot, I noticed that it 
it's a little bit too wide so it comes up just too far it's flush with the surface however this bottom cover is protrudes uh, a little bit down so it would not close all the way um, and since again the wire is so short the only remaining option that i saw was to lay it stick it to the top surface right here so i added velcro this is the scotch 3m 10 pound velcro i've used it many many times in the past and it sticks quite well to pretty much any surface um but because this is the top surface and the battery is kind of heavy and it will vibrate a bit and also will go through temperature fluctuations being outside all the time and on the top surface um, i decided to add a bit of this good stuff the loctite super glue it's an ultra gel formula and most super glues stick extremely well to abs plastic um, this plastic is i'm quite sure is abs so i've added it to the bottom of this velcro surface and i placed the other side velcro on this side the reason why i place it on this side is because if i were to place it on this side then laying it down this way you actually lose about half an inch of wire because it's bent this way and that's just enough that it won't reach that surface so i had the velcro on the bottom side and now it reaches just enough to attach flat to the top um, surface. So go ahead and stick it in there and get the Velcro attached. So I'm going to push it farthest to my left right now to get this wire as um, kind of short as possible and then press down to engage the Velcro. Okay, this should be good. I'm just let it dry and it should not budge after we put it all together. So that's how it's going to sit. As you see, the wire is not super top, but it's just long enough to reach where it's mounted. Okay. So we're going to put it back together. Um, don't forget to plug in the motor for the blades, which goes right here. And then we place this grab the top and hopefully everything fits yes it looks like it does okay and even if the battery were to fall off on the inside i don't think it would really cause any damage um, there aren't any moving parts inside and nothing really fragile in that area neither so should be good to go we're gonna put the screws back on um, you can use the uh, supplied torx bit or i just used my own t20 torx bit on my drill and just make sure not to over tighten it so you can on mine i would set my clutch to about four or five maybe six um that's it oh one more thing i did find it was a little bit hard to remove this cover this cover just pulls off by hand quite easily this one however um, is attached on these two sides to this piece and this piece over here. So you might notice that there are two clips on each side and they need to be pressed together in order to release. However, once it's in here, you don't really have access to even put your fingers in there actually. So what I, what I use is two kind of flat screwdrivers or pretty much any screwdriver really and squeeze the two parts together and press down at the same time. And that popped out pretty quickly. I believe most of them come with the tool to actually do that and it normally sits right here. It should be a white tool. You just kind of press down, maybe like do it tap. Um, but I couldn't find mine, so that's what I came up with. All right, thank you.